everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. My name is Jesse, and in today's episode we're going to do an introduction to the different languages that we can use to develop on the Internet Computer. To get started today, we're going to open up the corresponding tutorial for this video. And so as a reminder, you're going to want to head over to the Internet Computer Developer documentation, go to Tutorials, go to Developer Journey, and this is level 0 0.5, Introduction to Languages. And the link to this tutorial will be in the video description below. I also want to point out that the documentation for different languages on the internet computer can also be found on the developer docs homepage in this programming languages card in the middle of the screen. Here you can see direct links to Motoko documentation, Rust documentation, and also the TypeScript and Python CDK libraries. It is important to note that the TypeScript and Python CDK libraries are community contributions, so they are not managed by Definity like Motoko and Rust are. So we will dive into those a bit more and talk about the differences between all of these languages. So to get started, we're going to take a look at this brief slideshow to introduce us to these different languages and some of the advantages and disadvantages to developing in one language over another. So one of the key features of the internet computer is that development can be done in any language as long as it can be compiled into a WASM module. So natively in the Internet Computer SDK, the tooling supports development in Motoko and Rust. So the IC SDK, we installed that in the module 0 0.3, where we downloaded the tools required for our development environment. And so we should already have that installed if you've been following along thus far. And so with that tool, we can natively start to develop Motoko and Rust locally. In this developer journey version, we will be focusing on Motoko development, but we will have a future variation that focuses on Rust development as well, since there are many pros to developing in Rust versus Motoko and vice versa. In addition to the IC SDK, we also have the Rust CDK or Canister Development Kit that is also available for use with the local tooling provided by Definity. And like I mentioned, there are several community contributed CDKs, like the TypeScript and Python ones that are featured on the homepage of the developer documentation there. And another key feature of developing on the internet computer is that it's possible to use many languages within a single project. So it's possible for you to write one canister in Motoko, another in Rust, and then a third in Python. And that is made possible through Candid, which is the Internet Computer's Interface Description Language, or IDL. And we'll also be talking a little bit about what Candid is in this module, um, and then diving deeper into using Candid and generating those interface description language files in a future level of the developer journey. So Motoko, like I said, is going to be our primary focus in this developer journey, and there will be a future variation that focuses on using Rust instead. But for this developer journey, we are focused on Motoko since Motoko is specifically designed for canister development on the internet computer. And it's been designed specifically to support the internet computer's unique features and workflows. And it's also been designed to give a familiar syntax and development feel to developers who may have an application layer background. So if you have used JavaScript, Python, or Ruby in the past, Motoko may feel very familiar and comfortable for you. In comparison, Rust is also supported by the IC SDK and also through the Rust CDK, but of course Rust is not um, native to the internet computer. The CDK can be installed separately from the IC SDK if desired. So if you are a Rust developer who is looking to purely develop in Rust and you are looking to use the Rust CDK separately, you can use it independently from the IC SDK if you'd like that workflow. 
Rust is typically a good choice for developers who are already familiar with Rust, or if you have a background in C or C++, since Rust is similar in syntax and development workflow to those languages. Rust is also a really good choice for large complex projects because Rust has a very mature library ecosystem. So in comparison, since Matoko is a fairly new language still, there are some gaps in the library ecosystem and sometimes it can be hard to find a library that fits a specific niche need, whereas Rust has a very wide mature library for different packages and tooling that has been provided within the Rust ecosystem. So what are the main differences between Motoko and Rust? So to get started, we will take a look at some of the differences that are specific to the internet computer, and then we'll take a look at some differences um, that are a bit more general, just comparing the two languages, but specifically to the internet computer, Matoko has fully automatic built-in support for Candid, and that support is built into the compiler and the runtime system. Whereas with Rust, Candid is supported through libraries, and that in return regularly needs manual intervention and conversion, so it's not automatic like Matoko is. For stable memory, support in Matoko is automatic, however, performance is not yet ideal. Whereas in Rust, it is also library supported, like the support for Candid is, and the performance is much more predictable and reliable than in comparison to the Matoko performance. Both Matoko and Rust have native support for asynchronous data flow, which is important for the internet computer's communication asynchronously. When considering support for actors, and so if you remember, a canister can contain a single actor, Matoko has native actor support since Matoko was written with actors in mind, whereas Rust tends to be a bit more error prone when it comes to actor support since it can have potential conflicts with deep-rooted language features within Rust. Then as far as internet computer specific static analysis goes, Matoko enforces various safety checks. However, Rust does not have any static checking and it is possible that canisters may trap when violating different restrictions. Moving on to a couple considerations that are a bit more generalized and not specific to the internet computer. The language maturity of Matoko is much less than the maturity of Rust. Matoko, like I mentioned, still has several gaps when it comes to libraries within the ecosystem, and there's still a lot of development work to do in the completion of creating Matoko, whereas Rust is considered mature enough since it has solid library support, whereas Rust is considered mature enough due to its extensive library support in the Rust ecosystem and the different packages that are available to Rust developers. When we talk about build time, Matoko is faster than Rust and therefore Rust is slower than Matoko. And when we take into consideration the difficulty of learning Rust versus Matoko, Matoko is much easier to learn than Rust since Rust is quite complex and has a lot of different details that need to be considered when using Rust for development. Another important consideration is memory management. Matoko has an automatic garbage collection process, whereas Rust has application-specific memory management. However, it is strongly supported by the compiler. Lastly, Matoko does not have any foreign function interface support, but Rust has a typical CFFI compatibility. So now that we've talked about Matoko and Rust, which are the two languages that are natively supported through the Definity tooling, we can take a look at the community provided CDKs. So these are canister development kits that have been developed and are maintained by different community members. And you'll see that there are a couple reoccurring names of community projects that are responsible for these different CDKs. So the first one is the Python CDK. This is known as the Kybra CDK, and it is developed and managed by Demergent Labs. 
Python is a popular tool used for different workflows, including web development, AI functions, and data analysis. It is considered very human readable and it's a very versatile language. Demergent Labs also develops and maintains the TypeScript CDK, which is known as the Azel CDK. And that is to provide support for creating canisters using TypeScript. There's also a community provided CDK for Solidity. So Solidity, you may have heard of before since it is widely known within the Ethereum network, since it is the primary language used for implementing smart contracts within the Ethereum ecosystem. And Solidity is supported through Bifinity and that is developed and maintained by the Bitfinity EVM team. And so that provides a way to develop Solidity smart contracts and deploy them on the IC. Lastly, there is a C++ CDK known as the ICPP Pro CDK, and that is developed by the community members at ICPP World. Lastly, we're going to take a high level overview of Candid and how it fits into the development workflow with creating canisters in different languages. So like I briefly mentioned earlier, projects can be created and have different languages used for different canisters within the same project. And those canisters are able to communicate with one another within that project through the use of Candid. So Candid is an interface description language, and its primary purpose is to describe the public interface of a service. So when we're talking about the internet computer, a service is a program deployed in the form of a canister. So if you have a canister deployed on the internet computer, that canister is providing a service that is defined by Candid. So each canister will have a Candid file that defines the interface description of that canister's service. Candid's job is to define the public methods for a service. So each method has a sequence of argument and result types, and those can include annotations that are specific to the internet computer, or they can be non-specific to the internet computer as well. These interface descriptions make it possible to interact with the canister service through a variety of different ways, including the command line interface, the Candid user interface, which is a local web-based interface, or through another program or language. So these services can be called from other canisters, other programs, or other interfaces such as HTTPS outcalls. One of the key features is that Candid is language ag agnostic, which allows for the interoperability between front ends and services that are written in different languages. In a Candid file, the Candid values are directly mapped to the values and the types of the host language. And Candid also has native support for specific IC features. Another key feature of Candid is that it supports service interface evolution by specifying changes without breaking existing clients. So it allows for adding new parameters to a service safely without losing compatibility from existing clients. So that will wrap up today's episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In the next episode, 0.6, we will take an introduction to DFX, which is a command line tool that we will be primarily using throughout the remainder of our developer journey. We will take a look at the basic usage and syntax of DFX, including its subcommands, flags, and options. We will take a look at how to upgrade to the latest version of DFX, installing a specific version, and then we will dive into creating a new project, exploring that default project structure, and then we will review the default configuration and program code that is created when we create a new project with DFX. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel to be notified when the next episode of the ICP Developer Journey is released. In the description of this video, you'll find all of the resources necessary for this episode, including the link to the corresponding tutorial on the developer documentation, the link to the developer community on the Discord server, and the link to the forum post discussion for the developer journey series where you can leave us feedback and comments regarding the developer journey tutorial series. We'll see everyone next time. Take care.